So when you're playing the objective in Overwatch, you really want to think of it. So when you're playing the objective in Overwatch, what a lot of people will do, and I mean a lot of fucking people, will just sort of sit on the point. Ignore the fact that I'm attacking. They'll just sort of sit on point and wait for the attackers to come to them. That is fine-ish. The issue with that, the big fucking issue that I'm hoping I can at least clear up a little for anyone who needs to watch this, is if I'm if I'm an attacker and I'm going to attack point, like right here, if everyone is sitting on the point and we overwhelm everyone on point, you know, we force people in here, force them over here, we force whoever's spawning to, you know, go back that way, then we have taken the point. Like, then, you know, the attackers are defending, and now the defending team is scattered and has to kind of, you know, fight into the attackers, who are currently getting progress capping the point. So, it begs the question, if I'm not supposed to play on point, to defend the point, where the fuck am I supposed to play? I picked Noombani specifically to answer that question. Because if you're playing down here on the objective, you are effectively dead. The benefit to defending is that you do not need to be on the objective. The enemy needs to be on it. Your job is not to be on the objective. Your job is to make sure the enemy is not on the objective. So let's say, you know, the enemy's coming by, they come and push the objective. They are now down there, and you can just kind of play up here, shoot them from range. Just by being up on this high ground, you're making, you know, Ryan, Brig, some of those melee heroes completely fucking useless. But also, you have way more freedom than the enemy who's kind of, you know, fish in a barrel. They have to play down there and, you know, stay on the objective with no cover. Meanwhile, up here, you've got, you know, this little thing here. You've got this pillar here. If you need to, you can go through this door here. You don't have to play the objective. The attackers do. There is nothing stopping you from just kind of going, okay, I'm just gonna rotate all the way through and just, you know, start shooting from here. There's nothing stopping you from doing that. The attackers don't have a choice. If they're capturing, they just kind of have to play around the objective and hope that they don't get overwhelmed. If you are defending, you don't have to be on the objective. Like, the only reason you have to be on there is not- is to prevent the cap. And even then, even then, if the attackers are capping it, and this is a major mindset thing that I see from people, what people will do is they will see one enemy on it and go, we need to stop it right now. And then they'll take the fight on the point and die because they took the fight on the point for nothing. And then it becomes a 4v5 and the enemy snowballs it and, you know, you lose your whole team. If the enemy is capping point, theoretically speaking, the only part that matters about the objective is that 100% mark. Give them as much of point as you need to find picks and get the kill. And if, if they're going to take 100%, have someone drop at like 95 or 99 and stop the cap. The less time the defenders spend in this murder section of the map, the better. When you're attacking and have control of the objective, especially when it's cart. What I will see people do when the attackers control the point, or the payload, is they'll just have all five bodies sitting on it. And that's, that's it. The issue with that, yes, you get the maximum speed bonus for it, because you know, it will just move faster, because it's slow as fuck with one. But, when the enemy starts fighting you, on the point, where do you as an attacker have to go? You have nowhere. You can back up, and you have given them the objective. When you are pushing a payload like this, what is, I, I don't want to say standard, but what you should typically try to do is have one single person on it who can protect themselves or rejoin the team. Number one pick for that is usually Lucio because he has speed. He can literally just, you know, hippity, hoppity, hippity, hoppity. He's with the team now. He can heal himself. He's one of the best duelists in the fucking game if you can learn him. Please learn Lucio. It doesn't matter what role you play. Please play Lucio. 
he's just one of the best to have on point. Something like a Mercy? And not a fucking good pick, because Mercy. Like she can she can shoot, and that's about it. Having your tank on point, also a pretty fucking bad idea, because you need you're gonna need someone for the next part I'm about to explain. While you have one person on the objective pushing it, what you should have is the rest of the team fighting, you know, up in chokes, so that, you know, the enemy is wasting their time. Because he, here's the thing. If you're pushing the payload, and I'm the defender that wants to stop it, if the fight is happening here, we have to kill you here so that we can go to the objective. The me In the meantime, objective's being pushed the whole fucking way. So here are the two options. Either I can go over to point where the entire team is, pop, you know, one ult, and now every attacker has left the objective and we win. Or, you can force me, as the attackers, to take the fight here, pop my ults, and waste utility, and panic, and then still have to go over there. Because if you move the fight here, where the payload's gonna go, where the enemy needs to push, if the enemy starts using ults, you can literally just back up. If the enemy starts committing ults, you can just kinda, nope, nope, back to point, nope. Because you have all the space in the world. If you're attacking, and you've got all this space, all this space in front of the payload to stop the attack, the defenders from taking back payload, take that space. If you can, force a fight as close to their spawn as possible, so that these fights are happening out in the middle of nowhere, and the enemy is wasting ults in the middle of nowhere. And meanwhile, your Lucio is on point, just kind of... Yep, still pushing. Like, that... That's a big fucking thing that I see. Fucking everyone will be fighting on the cart, and then you lose the fight, and you have nowhere to go. Basically, imagine there is a brick wall right behind the payload that you cannot go through. If there's a brick wall behind the payload, do you want to be taking a fight here, and then have nowhere to run? Or, do you want to be all the way up here, with someone still pushing it, and no brick wall behind you, so you can just kind of back up, back up, back up. And then you've still got, you know, you've still got space, and the enemy's wasted resources. I have no clue how concise or easy to digest that is. But... The basic, the basic gist of it for Payload. Have one person on the objective. Have everyone else fighting up front. That applies to, you know, control points too. Like, uh, fucking control maps. If, I know Numbai is not control map. If this circle here is the control point, and we have it, don't just keep people on the point. There's no reason to be there. Have everyone fighting up front, you know, in front of the objective, Enemy has to waste resources, and then you move back, and you can contest the objective with more resources. Th that's basically the gist of everything I'm trying to say. If you control the objective, don't play on it. Play ahead of it. Control the space. Make the fight happen up here, up in front, and not on the objective where you have the invisible brick wall behind you. Uh, don't play on the objective. Get in front of it so the enemy has to waste time and resources. Peace.